Now we're going to have a quick look at multi-dimensional arrays in this video. Now they're quite simple in terms of the no regular PowerShell arrays, but they're more than one within the same variable. So here we have three arrays, one containing an apple price, one containing a banana price, and one containing a mango price. And they're actually separate arrays within one array. So if we do a simple one, which is just the array, we can see the output so far looks perfectly normal as you'd expect. If you do a count, we'll see that there's three items. The reason there's three items is because there's three arrays. So if we select the first array, which is always going to be zero, and do an output, we're going to see only items in that first array, in this case, the apple, and the associated price with that apple. Now if we do the same for array three, well we don't actually have array three because that would be array four. So if we do array two, which is array three in our case, uh, we see the mango. So you can see how the first interaction of those arrays starts to work. Now let's look at the building up the arrays. So we've tried with the first example which is to have all of the arrays put together from moment one. So in this case we're going to just quickly empty the array out and we're going to create an array item. So in this case a single array and then we're going to add some more afterwards in order to show you how it would look in a manual example. So the first thing we need to do is do the plus equals and then you see we've got actually got a separator here so we've, we wouldn't normally have that in a typical array but in this case it's to tell us that we are adding the array and then we're going to put our array values so in this case the orange and the price for the orange. Now, I apologize for my typing speed. It's quite terrible when you're trying to think and uh, operate at the same time. But this operation is the first array entry. So we now have a array item zero. So if I put in the count number, we have just one item, which will, it means in this case the array. So we have one array and in that array we have two items. So if I put in the count of the array zero, you'll see there's two items in that array. So let's flesh it out a little bit and add at least two more arrays so that we have our original number of having three, um, just to demonstrate some of the functionality that we have here. So we can add on, and we're just gonna add another one. And what we've now got is three arrays. So just like we had with the beginning example, only we're building up here, which it, depending on how you plan to use your arrays that might make more sense so in this case you might say okay I'm collecting variables throughout my script and at the end of the script I will need to interact and use all of them but they might not be there from first point so you can dynamically add them as you're going along using this kind of um, let's say programmatical language so now the question is well that covers arrays, what if I want to add to an existing array? So here's the option. We're going to go into the array items, so we, we can see what we've got already. We've got our three arrays still. I'm going to select array 2, which is effectively array 3 out of the, the listing, so the, where the mango is at the moment. And we're going to add into that some additional values. So it's not that dissimilar to adding an array, but in this case we're already pointing it to a specific area to start with. And we're not having the separator, so we're just telling it we're going to add these items into this array. So from this point of view, it's a straightforward one. I'm going to add melanin. And when we do the return, we'll effectively still get the same number of arrays at the root level. When we go into the array, uh, in this case array 2, which is the third array in our listings, we'll be able to count a different total number of items as there will now be more items within that array, whilst in the others we have like two items on average and now in this case we'll have, uh, what is it, six. So you can see there our array number three, which is index two, has more values and if we just return everything you can see that they're all there. And that's how you add to the arrays. Now this wraps it up for this video, so hopefully you liked it. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.